Okay, this is um, <clears throat> from the book Medical Reformation. We're on the chapter about estrogenic chemicals. We're on page 544, uh, image 36-8. Um, so... What we're basically saying here is there's lots of chemicals in common personal care products that are highly estrogenic. And what that means is they might increase the risk of breast cancer, endometrial cancer, fibroids, prostate cancer, all these um, estrogen-sensitive uh, tumors. This right here is benzophenone, which is used in sunscreens. And there's subtle variations on it, oxybenone, benzophenone, and benzophenone 3. And the point is these are estrogenic. They got a phenol group on them or something that can function like a phenol group. Uh, so it's one of the reasons why I don't ever wear sunscreen. I mean, some people work outdoors all day long and they have to wear some sunscreen. But look at the guys who cut lawns and stuff. You can wear a sombrero. You can wear a long sleeve shirt. If I need to get my vitamin D, I go out in the sun, read a book for an hour or something, go back inside. I don't like sitting around at the beach all day. Consider that a waste of time. I mean, there might be special circumstances on vacation or something, but I don't want to do that habitually. All right, so anyways, here's uh, figure 36.9. This is estrogen excretion from the human body. And so what happens is estrogens are taken up by the liver. These are excessive estrogens that the body deems should be excreted. And it then conjugates them. In particular, it does something called glucuronidation. And think of that as being like a glucose with a carboxylic acid attached to it. And it attaches it to the E. The E here stands for estrogen. And this will be the glucuronic acid. That is then excreted by the liver into the bile, travels through the bile into the small bowel. You know, it goes into the second part of the duodenum here. And then it travels out to the colon. And normally, we would just defecate that out of our body and lower our estrogen levels. However, people who eat low-fiber diets have more bad bacteria. Just think of there being two types of gut bacteria. There's good gut bacteria that feed on fiber, and there's bad gut bacteria that feed on processed food and meat residuals, okay? So the bad bacteria have more of an enzyme called glucuronidase, and glucuronidase cuts the conjugated glucuronic acid from the estrogen, and once the E for estrogen is freed up, it gets reabsorbed into the blood. Normally what should happen is you should defecate that excess estrogen out of your body so what I'm saying here is people who eat low-fiber diets tend to become estrogen overloaded, which increases the risk of breast cancer, uterine fibroids, um, endometrial cancer, prostate cancer. So what's the point? You should eat more fiber, and you'll minimize your risk of this. Other things, you just filter your water. Just use a carbon water filter, and you remove these estrogenic chemicals from your tap water, um, and then you'll markedly reduce bodily levels of estrogen. Just doing those two things, carbon water filter, which are pretty cheap, um, and eating more dietary fiber, you'll dramatically lower your estrogen levels. Because I've known women, they'll tell me, every single woman in their family had to get a hysterectomy before the age of 35 because of fibroids. So, you know, it's good to know what's going on. And that's why I also think the pink ribbons for breast cancer is a bit of a joke. I'm just giving money. Like, We're raising money for breast cancer. You're just giving money to the chemo company, and nobody ever teaches these women anything. Okay. I've only had one medical student in many years who, who knew anything about these estrogen effects, all right? All the rest of them, even the ones going into Obigani, don't know this. That one was going into Obigani and had some experience with hormone stuff. That's the only one I've ever seen in years. Okay, let's see. What's next here? Um, oh, here's this lady. And the reason for this picture is you take a look at this lady, Okay. Estrogen promotes secondary sexual characteristics, let's say, of a woman here, like development of the breast, development of the Virginia and the uterus and whatnot. And the point that I'm saying is you look at this lady, it's obvious why she has high estrogen levels, okay, for her bodily development to make her fertile, all right? But why does a soy plant have high estrogen levels? Does a soy plant have breasts? I don't see any breasts. Does a soy plant have a Virginia? I don't see a Virginia. The reason why a plant might have high levels of this hormone is why do women take ethinyl estradiol and estrogen for birth control pill? Because estrogen levels are high when a woman's pregnant and it tells her not to ovulate. So what I'm saying is imagine you're a soy plant. A lot of plants like to be eaten and let's say the bear eats the berries and it walks a couple miles down the path in the forest, defecates and now new berry bushes can grow in other locations. But what I'm saying is there's some plants that don't like to be eaten, and it appears to be the case with soy. So what they do is they use chemicals that are toxic to the animal that eats them. So if soy cranks up the estrogens in the animal that eats it, it can potentially, let's say, make that animal infertile. So what I'm saying is the high estrogens in soy seem to me to be 
functioning as a pesticide that the animal uses to make the animal infertile that eats it. In addition, soy plants are goitrogenic, so they're toxic to the thyroid. That can also decrease the reproductive capacity of the animal that eats it. So what am I saying? Why do I think soy is subsidized? Because it's a way to make the low IQ proles infertile. Okay, that's my impression of what's going on. Soy has thousands of times higher estrogen levels than other plants. Also, flax does. Flax is even higher, but the flax estrogens are of a little bit different type. And what people typically say to me is, well, soy only, soy estrogens only activate the good estrogen receptor, not the, the bad one, you know. Um, but as it turns out, if you look at the papers, like the Stefan Mueller paper, you'll see it activates the so-called bad one, the one that uh, is responsible for secondary sexual characteristics, um, and it, it almost as much as the other one, so I'm not buying that argument. Um, Anthony J, a uh, PhD guy, has good videos about soy. He's a lipid uh, biochemist. So that's why I would never eat soy. Um, I think it's like one of the most overrated foods. Activates both the alpha and the beta estrogen receptors. Uh, why do I think soy has got a reputation as being so healthy? Well, first of all, big money wants it in the processed food to sterilize the low IQ proles. Uh, secondarily, people say, oh, well, the Asians ate it. They don't have any problem having babies. They ate tiny amounts that grow in their backyard that was unprocessed with nothing sprayed on it. Uh, modern GMO soy is sprayed with typically GP glyphosate, which is really toxic. It's neurotoxic. It's toxic to the liver. It's obesogenic, diabetogenic. It increases the risk of leaky gut. Um, I think the reason why soy got a reputation as being relatively healthy is because it was typically compared to meat and dairy. And it's not as bad as meat and dairy in, in a lot of ways, you know, for cardiovascular, atherosclerotic disease, and diabetes, but it's still toxic. It's unique as a plant having heme iron. Okay, that's pretty bad. Typically, the GMO form is often processed with hexane, which is a neurotoxin. Uh, so, I mean, how much worse does it have to be? It can damage the female reproductive tract, cause precocial... Uh, uh, precocious puberty, it lowers male sperm counts. <laughs> what more do you want? What could make it better than that? I mean, anything that estrogenic would have to sleep with me and do my laundry, okay? I mean, it's got so many problems. Why would you ever want to bother with it? That's my take on it. And didn't think it was a good food, but he's polite about what he says. Me, no one cares what I say. I'll just say the truth. I don't have to sugarcoat it. Okay, I think soy is a terrible food. Um, Bantu women in South Africa, they don't worry about osteoporosis, uh, and they drink. They get hardly any calcium. I also found that kind of funny. Uh, they exercise, so the amount of calcium you take is not that, is not that big of a deal. There's no, no such thing as calcium deficiency. Anybody taking a naturally occurring diet, um, they get more exercise certainly. Okay, let's see, acid load, I don't want to get into all that. Oh, actually, that's the end of that chapter. So I'll just end that chapter for now uh, on estrogenic stuff. I uh, hope that was helpful.